I firmly believe in manifesting the life you want to live before you live it. Um, and I am so honored I get to be able to watch my friends' horses and really just lean into having a desert horse homestead. So you're going to meet Hank, Rosie, and Sunny, which not a lot of people get to meet. They are very special horses. One thing I have learned about my depression, at least since it's very new to me, I, my whole life, up until like two years ago, was operating not understanding I had anxiety and depression. Last year, I think I really dove into what anxiety is to me, and this year I'm really um, figuring out how to deal with my depression. One way that I've been able to deal with my depression is horses. I have an issue though, which also causes me depression and anxiety. I get FOMO for my future. So right now, even though I am like at the same time helping my depression and anxiety, I'm almost adding to it because I'm like, why don't I have three horses? Why don't I have a barn? Like, it's so funny to me because why am I in a hurry? Like I should just be enjoying the now. Okay, hold on. Let me soak the food and then we'll chat a little bit. Last episode, DIYing out of my depression, really a like dramatic title, but it is very true. After building that hole in my wall, essentially, it gave me a new perspective, right? I mentioned that in the episode. Like, it's very interesting how projects are reminiscent of my life. Uh, the Like the hole in the wall <laughs> project was definitely reminiscent of how many walls I have up. Uh, just starting any type of relationship. It's really interesting. Cause your girl, she is traumatized. <laughs> yeah, we're realizing that now. Um, when I'm at a low, I always reach out to my humans to help. And even though that I feel like was a couple weeks ago, it's I love how the timing works out. Everybody's coming into town this weekend. It, it inspired this episode to finish the outdoor dining area that I started before my depression. I stopped during and I started working on the hole in the wall and started like 5% of every single project that I could possibly have. Let me, let's DIY an epic outdoor dining, shall we? Well, we got, we got a muck and stuff first. Don't even get it twisted. Hi guys, you ready? I have actually made this outdoor dining area over before and I will link that video for you. It was an epic fail all around, but that then became my potting table. So once I cleared the area of the barbecue failure before, I started demoing this stone planter because I wanted to create a 10 by 14 pad to create an actual dining area. Per usual here, the name of the game is reusing as much material as we possibly can. So I started outlining with rock where I wanted the pad to, but then I came in with these posts that I had laying off on one of the acres of my property and pulled them over to use it to outline the actual area that I wanted to put the dining table on. I have never been more proud of a rectangle. Let's start there. This is literally a week's worth of work of digging, relayering, tampering that I did not film. It's just so not, like it's just not exciting, but this is like 75 layers of what I just showed you. I did not want to pour a 10 by 14 concrete pad because honestly, I didn't want something that permanent, nor did I want to add more concrete to the desert. And before we continued working outside in this heat wave, I DIY'd a quick Mr. Fan, which is just a basic fan with Mr.'s zip tied right to it. One thing about the desert that I did not know when I first moved out here, guess what? <laughs> There's no shade. You gotta build it, you gotta buy it, or you got to DIY it, but not, not anymore. Not thanks to Gardasol. I am so excited to finally get some shade thanks to Gardasol. Uh, we are actually gonna drive over to the outdoor dining area and I'm gonna show you what little shade I actually have. Thank God for this hat. Okay. The area to which 
I like to host all my humans. There's literally no shade. There, I can't even believe that people were like, yeah, cool, we'll come out and hang out. No wonder we always stayed in the house. I'm most definitely not gonna get out until I absolutely have to, but let me just, hold on. That is the majority of the area. As you can see, legitimately no shade anywhere. And it goes all the way over here with the barbecue area. The only shade is on the house and the actual structure you can sit in, which is the pottery room. We need to fix this. What you're about to see me and my friend Nitty build is actually their 10 by 13 outdoor louvered pergola sunshade in charcoal black. They literally walk you through the entire install process over on their personal channel. So I'm gonna card that video for you because that's exactly what I referred to as well as their manual. Once I had the bones built and secured, I was able to move forward with the louvered portion of this pergola, which includes this little handle, which opens and closes the shades we are about to install. Now, you need to individually add these caps on each side and then pop these into place, which will then give us le shade, the whole part of the pergola that we need. Now listen, the desert literally will swallow any structure it possibly can. So getting something that can withstand UV resistance, rainproof, snowproof, rustproof, snowproof, not necessarily here, but this is snowproof, because of its robust steel construction, it's a win-win for me in this decision. Another thing I think people do not consider here in the desert is the wind. A lot of people put drapes up to get extra shade around their pergola and those get damaged within seconds. This is not included within the pergola purchase. This is an add-on, but they offer an aluminum pull-down privacy screen that is connected to the entire frame. No damage by the wind. What? And extra shade. Yes. You can still see the view. And then check this out. You get to choose. Space is like, I can't wait to shit. Oh my God, okay. Because I can actually take this down and move it if I need to versus all of the things I've been building up until this point, it's just I've been demoing and redoing. I'm so done using material. So having this product, being able to uninstall it if needed and it is, stays the same quality, it doesn't get damaged. It's just, I mean, come on, chef's kiss. Like there is a big difference between investing in a structure that you know is gonna last versus giving it a go and trying to DIY something that I'm not necessarily very well versed on. Thank you so much, Gardasol. You have no idea. You just brought a space that's gonna be utilized so much to life. There's so many memories to be had here, okay. I have linked both products that I used here down below for you in the description as well as the pinned comment. And if you guys are interested and you're in a situation where you are looking to invest in shade onto your property, I highly suggest heading over to Gardasol and using my code to get 10% off, which is Gardasol N, which again, I put in the description as well as the pinned comment down below. Let's get back into this build, baby. Now that we have the Gardasol louvered pergola up in place, my brain can move forward with design. Again, we're recycling materials, so we rolled over a barrel and we're gonna cut that sucker open and DIY ourselves the dining table since that is the focal point now after the pergola is okay, up. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. So the barrel, we're doing kind of the same, we're doing the same exact DIY, just a bigger version that we did from the trailer with the barrel being the base of the table. The one thing, obviously, we can kind of take into consideration out here is like weather. So we need to make sure this does not move. Also, I would love for it to just kind of float on one barrel and be able to scooch under the rest of the table. I think that would just be a cool addition. And again, it goes with the theme of the recycled barrels that we're using throughout the property that have been on my property for a couple years now. So now the rock that I just demoed um, and moved away from me. I'm going to move back and into here so it weights down this base and then we'll build the frame and top the table and be done. It's like literally a one, two, three, let's go, you know? I'm gonna show you how easy it is to build a dining table using three power tools right now. I built a very basic frame, which I've done here on my channel before. I have in-depth tutorials on that, which I'll link for you. Um, and that's just the, the depth the width, all the sizes I want for my personal table. I'm going in with my permanent marker and marking where the support would lay into the barrel because what I want to do is push that frame into place to extra secure it. But the angle grinder is not necessary to the build of a basic table. This is kind of like an extra that we're doing here. 
Once I secured that table frame down into the barrel with some scrap two by fours, I grabbed other material that I was not using, dragged it on over. It's been out in the weather for three years, so I figured why not? It makes the perfect little base in order for us to move forward and wrap it with some fence posts that I had laying around in the shop from, these have been here for at least 30 years. I cut those down to size using my circular saw, which is your second power tool here. I secured the places of wood with my finishing screws and power drill, and my third power tool is going to be that orbital sander, sanding it down baby smooth. But we're going to save the reveal for the reveal. That battery operated chainsaw is surprisingly tiny but mighty. I've linked all the tools I've been using down below for you guys and we are moving forward with making some stump stools. I have a stump stool fire pit that the previous owner DIY'd himself and cemented down into the ground. So I'm just kind of following his lead and bringing that texture over to the outdoor dining. So all the textures that we have going on start to kind of make sense since we're pulling it in each area. A couple of things I have learned, number one, sitting directly on a trunk stump, not fun. It doesn't feel that good on your bikini booty. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another material to the top to make it a little bit more smoother and nicer. Number two, if I just use wood to decorate because I'm using all recycled materials, you know, it ends up looking a little dingy. So by adding a like white concrete top to the top of these stools, I think it will make it a little bit more modern and look a little bit more clean. It will also tie into the couch and the cushions that we'll be adding on the other side. It was so damn hot out that I could just let those drive for a couple of hours and enjoy this super moon that we had. This was a while back, um, so I apologize for that. No false pretenses here. There is no full moon right now. Uh, and I cleaned up some dog poop, which <laughs> showed you the reality of my life. DIY in that outdoor area, baby. One little poop at a time. Anyways, moved over to the tree stump that I did not demo out, which was the original base to the first table failure before. I don't want to move it because I thought it'd be a great side table where you could add, you know, food for a buffet or presents if we're celebrating. I mean, the table's big enough for that too. But I just, again, didn't want to get rid of it and throw it away if I didn't have to. So let's make something of it. Why are you not coming down? Oh my God. Let's pull it back down to the stools so you can kind of see where all the whites blending in. Don't those look cute? Oh, also, fun fact. Oh, hand is here. Guys, I'm not even kidding. These horseshoes, I found these horseshoes off on my property as well. I just thought they were cute, different colors. One thing that this Rachel did not know was going to happen was that there was a Hurricane Hillary coming on through. And I just started shoveling loose sand left, right, front, and center to start to fill back this space where everything was kind of divoting. When you see what happened during the Hurricane Hillary episode, which is coming out Friday, oh my God, you're going to die. So, I, I think you guys have met Mary Lou before, but she's literally one of my most favorite humans. And she came out and I, I asked her about drone footage because you guys don't know, but I know and they know that I'm doing something special to this side of my land. And we're just kind of having fun documenting it. And I hate when creators are like, I'm not going to show you when I show you, but this is just for me and my women right now. You guys don't know what we're really like up to, but we're just, I'm going to learn a drone with her. She's getting footage. We're starting to document a really special journey as a wild woman together, and it's just fun stuff. So, so it's boring to other people, but it's great to me. As I always say here on this channel, your space should evolve with you. Don't stay stagnant or stuck in a place that doesn't reflect you. Go ahead and change it. That is what I've done here multiple times, and now I couldn't be happier with the final product. And that's honestly really inspired by having it made in the shade thanks to Gardasol. I added a couple of different details and even some string lights to be able to utilize this at night because it's just so good. And you guys, what in the world? It just ties in so seamlessly to the cowboy area all the way to the dining.
It is insane to me the timing of things in my life. We started this episode by saying that I was DIYing this for my friends. And man, the fact that my wild woman helped me finish the outdoor area, even shooting the drone footage, Miss Mary Lou. It was just a full circle moment. And it was the first time I actually finally finished a space. But we got a lot more work to do.